season knows how to make me feel like I don't have to be something that I'm not in terms of like tiptoeing around her emotions or her moods. Season makes me very happy. What if I'm gonna come out as a like a bad person? Mm-hmm. Hey guys and welcome to Little Black But 91. Listen, we're talking to you guys about Ultimatum Season 1. Uh, listen, we're talking about Ninteko and Sizele. But the reality of the situation is I want to break it down to this question. Why Ninteko lost his voice in a relationship? Have you ever felt like your voice was on mute? Have you ever felt like, you know what, nobody can hear you when you speak? Have you ever felt like, you know what, when you speak, nobody listens? Have you ever felt like, you know what, there's a struggle to actually air out how you actually feel about certain situations and what you actually want? I mean, are you struggling with being misunderstood? Um, are you struggling with actually being able to have a conversation where your true intentions are being uh, felt and heard? Are you struggling with being seen, heard or understood? You know, because you see a struggling, uh, 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 a struggling to have a voice in a relationship is an indication of an abandonment of self. Whew. Let me say that again. The struggle to be able to have a voice within a relationship is an abandonment of self. And in that situation, you have forgotten who the priority is. It is you. Okay. The relationship has become unbalanced and you've put the other person's needs before yours. And you're, it's now causing you issues. And your voice has been lost a long time before this relationship. See, many a times that voice getting lost in a relationship is because there's a pattern of behavior where you've lost it before. Usually in our childhood, whether you had a parent or, uh, you know, uh, whether a guardian, whoever was looking after you and they shut you down emotionally. Usually that's where the loss of voice comes from. And then you actually pattern it in a relationship and you end up finding somebody else who also quietens your voice because you're feeling a familiar energy and spirit that you have dealt with in the past. And the lesson of life is telling you it's time to grow and it's time to learn and it's time to heal. But if this is something that you're going through right now, if this is something that you're feeling like, you know, your disbelief and your unconfidence um, in your own voice, then this is a video for you. We're going to break some stuff down using Ultimatum um, from SA South Africa season one and the Teco and Sizile situation in Kenya. And we're going to break it down for you so you can get some understanding. If you want the thing specific to you, go to the end of the video. Um, you'll be able to, you know, see uh, how it how it plays out specifically in your life as well as uh, going forward. But before we do. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, click on that bell button for notification of the uploads. We're going to go deep right now. I want to let you guys know, listen, we're also doing some coaching at this point in time as well. I would love for you guys to get involved. Um, I would love for you guys to, to, if this is something that resonates with you, if it's a topic that speaks to you, then I want you to get involved. I want you to reach out to me, go into my calendar, book yourself in. It's not free, but it is pay as you feel the session is worth. I want you guys to be able to be blessed and that's the best way I can actually do it in that sense, all right? So make sure you guys, if you haven't done so already, reach into my calendar, I'm booked up to June. So you can tell, listen, people are on it. I want you to be on it too, all right? Um, by the grace of God. Let's get this conversation. Deeper. Like I said earlier on, uh, you not being able to establish a voice in your relationship, you having a voice to, to speak what's on your heart and your mind, if you're struggling to be able to tell people how you really feel, it's a sense of abandonment. You've abandoned yourself. Um, and the reality of the situation is it happened way before. Now, we're going to look at Ninteko and Sazile uh, a little bit in their relationship. What makes you feel like you come out as a bad person? Because, like, maybe I'm doing too much with you. It's like I'm showing off, maybe, or something. I don't know. Are you just doing what feels right? Now, these two are obviously enjoying life and they've started to grow together in the most quickest of fashions. I mean, they have already started kissing. I think they even had sex already. Who knows? But they are far gone. Now, Niteko, the thing is, he has an ex-girlfriend called Kanya. If you know who she is, you know who she is. Kanya is mean, bitter, rude, wounded individual woman, right? And she, uh, you know takes it out on him um, in very manipulative sometimes, a little bit, you know, underhanded ways. But it's less of a, you know, striking, but more of a case of the way that she maneuvers. She refuses to give him the validation that he requires, okay? And she withholds from him. And because of that, he has struggled to want to marry her and has not necessarily told her all the way through why he doesn't want to marry her. 
Yet he's here with this young lady within a few weeks and he's thinking about marrying her. Why? Because something has shifted. What shifted? His voice. And the reason why it shifted is because a person has shifted. So half the job has actually been done. Let me say it again why the half the job has been done. <laughs> Let me tell you why the half the job has been done. Oftentimes our voice, okay, is quietened because of two things. One, ourselves. And two, uh, the other party. Number one is that in the Teco situation, it's a pattern of behavior of self-abandonment. But the second thing is that when you have, a, when you have, when your voice is not as confident, but you meet somebody who loves, cares, and appreciates you, uplifts you, uh, you know, creates an environment for your voice to flourish. What what tends to happen is your voice becomes stronger. And so in that scenario, you don't lose your voice. You actually gain one and you grow it and you develop it and it strengthens. So it's two things. Number one, self-abandonment. But number two, like I said, the person who it is. Cezile is a very friendly, warm, um, loving. She giggles a lot. You know, she just, you know, she's so soft, but she's got her own issues, right? Like she doesn't want to have kids. Um, and so in that, in that space, you see him, you know, loving on her. And the reason why he loves on her so easy is because the ROI is also very visible. A lot of times what will end up happening is people go into relationships and they give, 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 but one, because they haven't got very good boundaries, but number two, also because they're really trying to outlove you. They're trying to outlove your toxicity, right? Uh, in, in order to be validated. And so in doing so, what ends up happening is they end up becoming a punching bag or they end up taking more hits than they actually needed to take because they themselves haven't got a good boundary and good self-esteem and good self-love. But with someone like Cezile, who you saw him hugging up there, right? It's warm, it's wonderful, it's beautiful. The ROI is all immediate. You see how he's hugging onto her? You see how he's holding onto her? You see how she's smiling in his eyes? If you watch the actual ep episodes, you'll see how she's loving on him and loves his energy, loves talking to him. You know, when you have a woman that looks up at you and looks in you in the eye, like she just appreciates you, it do sign to you. So he's receiving that right now. He never really received that from Kanye. Yeah, they flirted. Yes, there was sexual tension and energy, but he always can never put his finger on it in terms of why he didn't want to marry her. We never really heard why. We can see now. And so he's smiling so much now because he doesn't have to fight to prove that he's worthy of love. Oof. He's smiling so much and you'll end up smiling so much because he, hasn't, he doesn't have to prove his love to this woman. The woman understands who he is, sees his love, receives it, and doesn't question it. There was a scene in the bedroom in episode two, where before he went on the, before they, episode one even, before they even went to um, exchange partners, right? He said to, to his ex-girlfriend, Kanya, listen, you know, I just, want, I just want you to tell me that you love me and you appreciate me, you care about me. That's all he wanted. She wouldn't give it to him. Uh, you know, she's like, you know, I love you, but you know what? I, it's a trusting. I can't tell you about a trusting. I was like, wait, why is there a trust issue? What's going on here? Right? But what, all he wanted was validation. He couldn't get it from her. Right? And we saw how he supported, uh, we saw how uh, uh, Nateko supported Zile with a house, situ with a baby situation. Took his time, had a conversation, you know, and they spoke about it. Right? So why is he doing all of that for her? It's because in reality, he's got someone who has a return on investment. Now, let's talk about you, specifically you. Okay, cool. So why have you lost your voice? Well, number one, it's usually a pattern of behavior. This is something that you've seen in your past, okay? More than likely you had a mother or a father, um, a guardian, whatever you want to call it, grandma, whoever was looking after you. And in that space, what they did is they denied you of your feelings. They denied an emotional connection with you. They denied the emotional attachment with you, right? And so whenever you became, whenever you went to share your, your feelings and your thoughts and your ambitions, your goals, what would end up happening is they would make you feel bad about you sharing your feelings oftentimes the negative aspects right again most of us don't really you know have problems expressing how we feel you know on a positive level but most times on a negative if you have a negative comment or negative emotions or how they perceive it to be that can be one aspect the other aspect is also generally you could have shared your emotional uh, thoughts ideas feelings good or bad and the parent giver didn't have the capacity nor the availability to be able to have conversation reason 
um, take in your feelings. Number three, the other aspect is a parent who in, instead of actually receiving your feelings would actually give you their feelings and you'd have to carry their feelings. Now, what that does to a person is it stops you from making you a priority and you focus yourself on the other person becoming a priority. And I want to do a separate video for this. OK. All right. About making other people priorities. The reason being is because it's a pattern, right? The sort of the parent taking on your feelings and your emotions they would, they would then plant theirs on you and you would have to become their uh, confidant. You'd have to become the person who would receive their emotions. You would be the, the sanctuary, the safe tower for their emotions and their conversation and their ideas and their things, their fears and their things that they're going through. You'd be supporting them. The child then becomes the adult. In fact, the child is adult, adult fied through the adult's inability to pass, uh, the inability to, to, to be an adult and hold its own emotions. What happens is a similar thing that happens to Adam and Eve in the garden. Instead of Adam taking responsibility that he caused an issue in the garden, he supplants his blame onto Eve. Eve then supplants her blame onto the snake. They have both passed on the blame and accountability. And so reality hits is that now the child is now adultified. You are adultified because you've had to take on the role of an adult. Whether the parent ignored you or left you or left you to be independent, you had to become an adult before your time. And what you had to do in order to become an adult, you had to shed your skin of being a child. Let me say it again. In order for you to survive in the household that you grew up in, you had to shed your skin of childhood and become an adult and look after yourself and become independent. In doing so, you also had to, with that skin, you had to abandon what your emotions were and feelings were because emotions and feelings don't pay the bills. Emotions and feelings don't uh, 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 get your school, uh, uh, get you to school. They don't, uh, 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 you know, feed you. They don't, um, you know, uh, they, they're not, your needs are not being met. So what's the point of talking about it if people are going to deny me this conversation or deny me the safe space to voice out how I feel? Well, it doesn't need to be here. And so you lose your voice in the process. And then when it comes to relationships, the moment that you encounter any storm or wind or the person's got a strong personality or the person is or the other party may not even be bad. They may not even be bad. The other person doesn't have to even be bad. They just need to be a strong personality. They may even care about you, love you, appreciate you, but you'll still lose your voice because in reality, you're so used to making the other person a priority in the hope of a silent contract that they will then return how you feel or what you want, what your desires, were, desires are back to you. But the trouble that situation is that in the, in the midst of that, right, the other party isn't aware of your desires or your needs. And sometimes people become oblivious to your needs because you're not telling them anything. And they inadvertently take advantage of your goodness, sorry, your kindness, sorry, your niceness, I should say, right? Because the kindness would have good boundaries, your niceness. And they take advantage of the fact that you're making them a priority without making yourself a priority. You self-abandoned yourself right? You abandoned you. You abandoned what you needed. And it's because it's happened a long time ago. You had to abandon you to survive. You're doing it now in a relationship, good or bad. You're going to do that because that's what the pattern of behaving is, right? You think that love is you now making them a priority and you abandoned your happiness to make them happy. Your job is to make them happy. If this is something that resonates with you, if this is something that you've been through, if there's something that you're currently going through, I want you to reach out. My calendar is in the description box. I am booked up to June because we're dealing with things like this on a regular basis. Suppression of anger, suppression of feelings, losing voice, okay, all right, self-abandonment. We're dealing with people not being able to have boundaries. We're dealing with people not having good relationships with family. I'm dealing with all of those kind of things, right? And we want to be able to help as many people as we can. So I want you to reach out to me. If you're going through this, don't suffer alone. Reach out, click on my calendar and book yourself in. Now, it may be June, but I'm telling you now, we're going to help. And the price of it, again, once more, is you pay according to whether you feel the session is worth. I don't want to hear an excuse about money. Listen, if you haven't got enough, don't worry about it being enough. Just book yourself in. Give whatever you can. The Bible talks about Elijah and the woman, the widow, and all she had was jar and a flower and a bit of fine oil. If that's all you got, you bring it along. We'll work with whatever you got. Because at the end of the day, once you get your healing, 
Who knows what prayer you'll pray for me? You know what I'm saying to you? The good Lord will open doors for me. Do you know what I'm saying to you? So I'm not fussed about that. What I'm fussed about is helping. You know what I'm saying to you, right? So make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. Click on that bell button. Don't suffer alone. And we appreciate you guys as well. We'll see you.